Hi, I'm Mark Fulton with Sysdig Customer Success. This is the first part of a five-part series of short videos on alerts in Sysdig Monitor, beginning with an overview. From a high level, alerts enable you to be notified of an event that occurs in your infrastructure based on a defined set of criteria. Alerts may be defined from multiple sources. Most commonly, you'll be leveraging metric-based alerts, that is, to be notified when a metric exceeds a threshold for a sustained time period. Besides metric-based alerts, Sysdig can also notify you from other different alert types. For instance, we have a downtime alert, where any type of entity, such as a service, container, process, host, and so on, goes down. That is, the backend no longer receives metrics from that given entity. We also have event alert types. These will be sourced from Docker and Kubernetes and could be useful to identify anomalous activity occurring on the container platform or from the containers themselves. In the example there, you can see um, a couple of different events that we may want to define alerts on. For example, um, a killing container event or a node not ready event. Useful for alerting on uh, uh, different events like deployments, like the deployment wasn't successful, um, containers are being restarted, and so on. We also have anomaly detection. Anomaly detection is a, is a, a source of predictive analytics where um, we will look at the historic data of a different subset of, alert, of metrics and issue an alert if a reading of that metric falls outside a known upper and lower limit threshold boundary. Like in this example, we can see that this metric example has gone outside of the boundary and so we're going to issue an alert. Finally, the last type of alert that we have is the group outlier. This can be useful in the case of a load balanced application or service. Um, whereby one of the entities participating in the load balanced activity becomes um, out of sync with the rest or behaves differently. Like you can see in that example there, uh, we have an anomalous pattern happening here um, on one of the entities being monitored. Let's pull up an example alert and let's understand here what parameters or criteria make up an alert? So as we saw on the previous screen, an alert is always made up of an alert type. In this case, we're going to look at a metric-based alert. An alert is also made up of a metric or event, depending on the alert type. Most critically, we are going to also need a scope. This will define a single or multiple set of services or physical entities in the environment that you wish the alert to apply to. So think about that in terms of where do you want the alert to apply to in your environment? Do you want it to apply to a specific host, um, a specific Kubernetes namespace, um, a cloud provider region, um, maybe even a, uh, a certain set of agents that share the same agent tag? Lots of different possibilities here for defining scope. And also triggering. So triggering is um, a metric threshold and time period. So how long do you want the metric threshold to be exceeded in order for an alert to be triggered? So in this example, we've set an operator here, um, a greater than operator, uh, and then we're putting in a fixed number. So that's in line with this metric. So this is a count-based metric, net error count. Um, if it's a percentage-based metric, then we would put in a percentage, right, as another example. This is the time period. So we're saying here um, that we need to have the, a reading of greater than 600 sustained for five minutes on average in order to trigger an alert. Finally, we have something called the alert segmentation. 
defined down here at the bottom. And this is uh, specifying on which service or physical entity type you want to be notified against. So do you want to be alerted for each container, host, service, or process within the scope set there? You can see in this example, we're segmenting by host. That means each time a host inside this scope meets these trigger criteria, we will send out uh, an alert. And finally, a couple more points here. We have the notification channel. So this is going to be who and how do you want to be notified? What should the notification look like as well? And then also, we also the, the option um, to generate assisted capture when the alert event triggers. This can be a, a useful if you have a use case for uh, performing some root cause analysis or some advanced forensics on the event itself. Finally, um, we're going to title our alerts and we're also going to assign different severity levels. These are generally up to you to decide um, depending on uh, maybe the thing, considering things like what is the response needed in line with the alert or is a response at all needed in line with the alert. So this is just a way of distinguishing or categorizing different alerts by severity. The, and the final point is alerts can be created from scratch. Or you can take a look through some commonly used alerts that we populate out of the box to see if there's a predefined alert that can meet your needs. Note that if you do go ahead and use some of these alerts that are available out of the box, you'll see that their segmentation and their scope is, generally speaking, uh, made quite widely. So you can see that by default, many of these are set to everywhere. So if you do use the ones out of the box, be sure to make sure the scope fits your requirements there. You can also um, create duplicates of these built-in alerts. So let's say, um, for example, you want to um, define a host is down alert, but you want, um, you want this to apply to multiple namespaces in your infrastructure. You have some good options available inside the scope. in the sense that you could do a multiple selection here. Or another option you could do is to duplicate the alert itself by a copy. And then specify uh, maybe the target scope uh, inside the copy to distinguish it from others. And then go ahead and, and copy it and then define your namespace in there. From scratch, there are three options to create alerts in Cystic that we'll explore in the next set of videos. Thanks for watching.